Hey, solopreneurs, welcome back to Porno Code, where we unlock the secrets of success for one person armies in the business world. Today, we have a very exciting topic that some of you have been asking me about. It's me comparing Flalaflo versus Adalo, right? We're going to be putting them head to head, and I'm going to tell you when to use Adalo and when not to use Adalo, when to use Flalaflo and when not to use Flalaflo. St- you should stick around because by the end of this video, you will be able to make very, very, very correct decision you know i mean correct and precise decision on which of these tools you're going to use for your project right before we dive in make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on any valuable insight that i get to share right here on this channel that's going to help you in your solopreneur journey all right let's get started so i've been using flutterflow for a very long time now yeah i've been using flutterflow for a while uh, i know they're just a few years old but i've been using it for a while now in fact last year i won the flutterflow at the cut of the year and this year i would used flutterflow for 346 days can you beat that so i used flutterflow for 346 days and i made 972 key edits and i made an average of 2800 edits a day <laughs> that's really that's really cool right that's a whole lot of days you, you can imagine that doesn't mean i do not like adalo but i just like the ease that flutterflow gives me gives me and ever since it came out i've been really excited using flutterflow to build projects for myself to build projects with uh with clients and also when my students get on the cohort i always like you know introduce flutterflow to them because i think it's a very cool way for them to launch their own mobile application it's really really cool if you ask me then for adalo my journey with adalo has been great when i started um when i started freelancing adalo was one of those tools that i started with you know i was building with wordpress before now and then i started using adalo when i figured it out then bubble yeah adalo was really cool because it got really got me started in my freelancing journey before moving to help entrepreneurs to launch their own one person business you know it got me right there in my entrepreneur journey it was very intuitive very easy to get started with you know took a couple of tutorials from Adalo's website and i was able to build my my first application right away right because the goal of Adalo is to make sure that everyone is able to code right everyone's not code the goal for Adalo is to make sure that um the goal for Adalo is making sure that everybody and everyone is able to launch their own um idea on the internet and probably make money of it or not make money of it so it really depends and my Nadalo is sparked i always you know get requests here and there to build mobile applications on Nadalo. i think you find me on the spark page right so this is me i've been i've been here for a while for a long time you know for a long time yeah i've been here for a long time have very close relationship with adalo short calls for adalo before it was really great both tools are really great but if you want to bring them down you want to bring well i want to compare tools based on their ease of use based on their user experience their database design customization let's compare both of them based on those tools <clears throat> For Flutterflow, yeah, it's so it's so easy to get started with Flutterflow. Flutterflow with Flutterflow, it's so easy to get started. All you have to do is to sign up to the application and you'll be able to get started. But the thing about Flutterflow, even though it's still a drag and drop application, so even though Flutterflow is still a drag and drop application, but it's something that you really have to, you know, kind of learn. You have to learn it. It has it has some sort of learning curve to it, right? For Flutterflow, it has a some learning curve to it so you really have to understand a few things before building application with flutterflow so i'm just gonna add a page right here don't worry just gonna create a blank page me 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 so there are there are tons of learning curve that a lot of learning curve that you want to go through before building mobile application with flutterflow because it's not as straightforward as um it's not as straightforward as as it should be right you have to learn how to use column rows you know so i want to add some stuff on Twitter flow and i'm adding a container like this and it's giving me uh so there are lots of options over here there are lots of options over here in Flutterflow that I get to choose from. And so these are things that you would not just get a good grasp of immediately. So it's something that you have to practice for a while. And then you say, oh, I think a column is like this. A container is like this. A row is like this before you get started with it. But see, Adalo, it's different, right? This is Adalo. And as funny as it may sound to you, Adalo does not have rows or columns. 
<laughs> right? This is a beautiful application, right? On my Flutterflow account. But you see, on my Adalo account, and all this right here is built without, uh, without rows or column. It's just super intuitive. So I'm going to open a new project. I'm going to open a new project. Yeah, like so. Just going to open a new project. Stay start from blank. And I'm just going to call it anything I want to. And I'm going to say for just playing around, right? So let's just imagine that I want to I want to just put anything on the Adalo app, right? I want to put anything on the Adalo app. And all I have to do is to click on the plus sign, just like we'll do on Flutterflow, right? I click on the plus sign, just like Flutterflow. And all I have to do is to drag a predefined template inside of it. So if I was going to put in a, a test, right? All I have to do is to drag it there. I want to put in an image. I just drag the image right there. That's it. That's it. I want to put in a test. I click on the plus sign and I drag in a test right there on top of the image, right? The only thing that I can do is to group everything, right? And group everything. And then after grouping it, then I can think of how the layout should scale, how it should scale, how it shouldn't scale. Because Adalo does not give you that flexibility to add like percentage to say, is it going to be, you know, to add percentage to it, to add, you know, padding, margin. Adalo does not give you any of those flexibility. But if we go back to, um, if we go back to Flutterflow, if you click on this right here, so I'm going to add a color to it. Just going to add a fill color to it. No, if I click on this right here, right here, you know, right here, you will see that it has this left padding, top padding, you know, it has paddings. It even have padding for the children too. It, doesn't have, it has, sorry, it has placement for the children too, anything I put inside. So, I, so when it comes to flexibility, right, Flutterflow actually wins this hands down. But when it comes to learning curve, when you want to get started, right, Adalo actually wins it. Because Adalo, with Adalo, you can rip up, uh, for, for a novice, right, for somebody who has never, ever built an application before, with Adalo, you can easily build something within one week. I'm telling you, you can easily build something within seven days. You just need to know how to place things on a on a on a um, rectangular container, right? You want a form, you bring it like this. This is a form for you right here. But if this is a form, and so and a form is just a collection of data, right? And when you add a form to a dialog, it just basically takes your data and turns it into a form and gives you an action. But when you're doing this in Flutterflow, say I want to add a form in Flutterflow, I will first of all, I will need to just add an input. Just a single, in uh, add a form element. I'll add a form element, right? Add a form element like this. Then inside the form element, I will need to add a lot of input. I will need to add a test input. Like this, inside the form element. So I can decide, so... It doesn't just work like this. I put a form input and I put an action. I tell, I tell Flutterflow exactly what to do with the action. Should the form, should they send the form down to the database? Is it going to be an API call? So there's a whole lot of things that I can do with this. But Adalo is pretty straightforward. So I think when it comes to learning curve, Adalo really wins. But when it comes to flexibility, it is Flutterflow. Flexibility in the sense that you can make as much customization as you want when you are using Flutterflow, but that's not very possible when it comes to a dialog. So that's one. And then also there is the database part of things. So a dialog comes with its own database. Yes, a dialog comes with its own internal database, which is which is called um, collections, right? This is called collections, right? That's how that's how Adalo sets up the database. And Adalo also has this AI database, magic AI database. Flutterflow has the same thing. But you see, Adalo, Adalo simply create instances for your database. So just imagine all Adalo users, they use this one single database and your database is just an instance of all the database, right? It's just an instance of all the database of one of those database in their collection, right? So whenever you create a database, it's basically an instance of it. And you don't really have so much, you know, you, you have control, right? But scaling with Adalo's database can be trouble. The more data you have in Adalo's database, the slower your app become. The more data it ha you have, the slower your app become. Though Adalo provides something that you can use, you can use API, you can even integrate with Xano, 
right? Xano is another is a is a cool no, a backend no code tool that enables you to store things outside of Adalo, but it's pretty much expensive. But when it comes to database for when it comes to Flutterflow, database is a standard. You can use Firebase. This is from Google, and it's pretty much straightforward. This is the default database of Flutterflow. So it's a standard. You can scale as much as you want. Do anything you want to write or you want to do. Write custom functions the way you want to, and also you can use this super awesome database. You know, Superbase. It's a it's a relational database, right? Firebase is a non-relational database. So it's a non-relational database. That means things are not like the way you have it. It's a no SQL database. So it's not like where you have um you know, it, it's, it's, it's just different. It's just different. So I have another video in my channel where I've explained database in Firebase. So you can go check it out. I've also explained database in Adalo. You can also go check it out. So those are two different. So, and also, you can almost use any type of database with Flutterflow. So just think of it that Flutterflow provides you with the front end and anything you want to do with the back end, you can actually do it yourself as much as you want, you know. But Flutter, Firebase... But for Adalo, Adalo is a bit different. Adalo gives you this database collection that is a bit restricting. And then if you want to do anything else, you have to use a tool like Xano to you have to use a tool like Xano to extend your database, or you have to consume a whole lot of API, which I'm not very sure that you really want to do as a newbie. So when it comes to database, I would give it two to Flutterflow, yeah, you know, database flexibility, I'll give it to Flutterflow. But when it comes to simple database setup, right? So database flexibility is different from setup. If you want to set up with Firebase, you have to learn. You want to set up with um, Superbase, you kind of have to learn. But if you want to set up database for, for Adalo, you have to learn too, but it's pretty much straightforward and beginner friendly when compared with um, Flutterflow. So I hope I'm not running too fast, right? Now let's talk about pricing, you know, pricing, pricing, pricing. So now it's telling me to upgrade. So I'm going to keep on click on the upgrade and you can see we have the $6 per month bid annually. So per month, if I'm, if I'm paying monthly, it's 45. That's a starter plan, right? 45. If I'm paying yearly, that's 36. So Adalo goes all the way to 200. And also if you want to enjoy that Adalo a lot, you have to go for the team plan. <laughs> Trust me, you have to go for the team plan, which is about $160 per month bid annually. Why? Because you have a lot of actions, 100,000 actions per month. But on the professional plan, you have 30,000 actions. On the status plan, you have 10,000 actions. So when I download say actions, it means when a user click on anything on your application, that's a single action right so you can see that if you have an application in adalo where you have a lot of persons consuming your application then you're going to keep paying and keep paying and keep paying so this is the yearly plan right but if you go with the monthly plan you can if you can see you're paying up to 200 dollars a month but if we go to flutterflow pricing you will see that you get to pay standard 30 dollars a month and you get to pay for you know, if you are billing annually, see, monthly for standard is thirty dollars. But because I'm in Nigeria right now, so it's twelve dollars a month because of priority pricing. But if we go all the way to yearly plan, you see, you're paying as low as fifty dollars a month per year, and you know, per per month, and you have a whole lot of things. Trust me, you have a whole lot of things that that you can't even believe. You can extract your APK, a lot of things are automated for you. But really, if you're just getting started and you want to launch your application, then the pro plan is enough for you. We don't need the team's plan. The pro plan is enough for you and you're, you know, you're just okay. Trust me. So when it comes to pricing for me, I, uh, Flutterflow really wins because it's way cheaper, it's easier. But... If you decide to use an standard, now that you're using an standard database with Flutter, Flutterflow, you're also going to be paying for the database too. For example, if you're using Superbase, you're going to be paying about um, $25 a month. So you see that's an additional cost also, $25 a month for the pro plan, right? So since you're a solopreneur, you're a one-mile business, $25 a month, yeah, it's a good, it's a good price. It's a good price and um, you have a whole lot of, you know, you have a whole lot of things to gain. 2 million edge functions a month, 8 gigabyte database storage, 100 gigabyte file storage. So you're not going to outrun, uh, you know, outrun this plan anytime soon. So you're going to add 25 plus your other pricing plan, which is um, 
50, you know, 50 plus 25, that's about $75 a month. So you can see that um, Flutter Flow is a whole lot more cheaper. But if you're looking, if you're thinking of the database alternative, let me show you. Xano is the database alternative for uh, a Dalo collection. And you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to come here, especially if you are a solopreneur and you're just getting started. If you're just getting started, you can see like Xano charge you $85 a month, bid $1,020, bid annually, $199 a month if you're just trying to, if you're just getting started. So that's a whole lot. So uh, this is not a complete take, but probably when we when I get to build some projects in Flutterflow and Adalo, you get to see a whole lot more reasons why I prefer a particular two over the other two. So in summary, you can actually use Flutterflow and you can also use Adalo, but it's just the ease of use. There's a lot of things to consider, like the pricing, the flexibility when it comes to the UI, the ease of use, database. These are things that you should also consider. And also you want to consider customer support. So I think both tools are great when it comes to customer support. Um, Flutterflow, Adalo has a forum, Flutterflow has a forum, and uh, Adalo has a Slack group. And Flutterflow also have a Discord group that you can use for support. They have real-time customer service on their mobile application that you can also use. And also they have a forum that you can go and ask any questions that you want. So it's, for me, I think it's a draw when it comes, comes to customer service. So you see, in summary, these are all great tools that you can actually use for your application too. But just consider the do's and don'ts, you know, consider all the pros and cons and see if it's something that you want to, that you want to do. So thank you very much for joining me on this comparison between Flutterflow and Adalo. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope, oh, oh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'm sure that now you'll be able to make very informed decisions for yourself when you're trying to build your own low code application. You like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and leave your comment below on which of the two you prefer and why. There's a free gift in the description. Do where to check it out. I'll see you in another video. Bye.